Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today I am bringing you something that was highly re uh, requested over the um, years and I finally got around to trying it out. I made a few attempts before but um, it wasn't successful and that would be the tutorial for cables uh, for forge energy and stuff like that. So we'll be taking a look at the, the process of setting it up. I won't cover how the code works because there's a lot of procedures and it would be very time consuming to put that into a video. Uh, instead I've provided not only the models for Blockbench uh, so you can basically customize all the uh, different cables. There's quite a few different types of cables as you can see here. There's uh, E, F, I, um, some of these, like the L one, has some sub cables in it for different rotations for that model. So uh, there's quite a few things that actually make components for actually the connections and stuff like that. Uh, the uh, pro for actually this system is it uses um, procedures, so you have a lot more control over the script um, compared to if you were to use block states and stuff like that. So. Um, we have the option to set certain events and stuff like that when the cable connects. Uh, again, there is something like, I don't know, 15 or something uh, actual models. Again, if you wanted to edit them, uh, we'll cover that in a little bit, but you would basically open up the actual block bench model. It will be all ready set up for the rotation that it needs to be in for the actual project and then you basically make your changes to that particular file as long as you keep the same rotation where the connections are uh, in the model itself you should be fine for adding and designing it yourself uh, there's also the actual models in the files as well for the JSON so all these are set up already uh, ready to go for basically what you want to set up for your cables. Uh, there is the texture that I used for it. Uh, this one is pretty basic. Uh, it has the different shapes uh, for the connection points. This is used just to kind of make it a little look a little bit nicer when it's connecting and stuff like that. The models are already pre-configured for this particular texture, so all you really need to do is change the texture for this. Um, if you wanted to basically set it on uh, your own cable up and stuff. So again, if you change the model, you'll have to adjust the, the, the map as well for what your, um, model uses. But, uh, this is the quick, easy way to get started. Um, procedures, there's actually quite a bit of them. There is the update tick. Now everything is run through the update tick for the blocks. So... Uh, thankfully, we only need one update tick for all of them. I've configured it in such a way that it will um, take care of the forge energy part as well as the um, model updating part, which is broken down into a few different uh, procedures. So this is the main procedure for the update tick. Uh, you'll basically be setting this up for your block. All you need to do is import it and set up the two procedures that it requires to call. Now there's uh, help text in these procedure files that you can click on and you can see what procedures you'll need to, or things that you need to set up. Anything with a comment, a uh, little question mark, if you click on it, it has a little note in it. Uh, I'll explain how that all works. Uh, so there's two main files inside of that that basically get called into the um, update tick. The first one is the um, the actual model updater main script. So this basically controls all the different block models and uh, those can be found in all these ones here. So again, it's the same folder structure as all the other files. So you'll be able to easily find the different um, models that you need to set up for the procedures and stuff like that. So again, these letters basically represent the um, the actual type of model it is. So I try to give them names that really represent the shape of it. But again, certain things like the LT and XT or TX uh, basically are a little bit different shapes than um, you can't really put into a letter format and I just kind of, they're, they're kind of a cross between 
the L and T, which would be kind of an LT version. So again, those have uh, different letters in them. So LT is just basically the base one, where anything with a C or two Cs are basically uh, different rotations of those blocks. So um, again, when it, you're importing it, it won't really matter too much as long as it's set up for the main procedure and everything has um, the actual uh, help text, so it's easy to set up. All right, so the forge energy part, there is a couple different logics, um, logic conditions, which are basically called into the main one. Uh, the main file is right here, so this is the one that you would end up importing. Uh, these have to be just regular procedures. Uh, again, a lot of these things have to be regular procedures. You need to make them and then call other procedures into this procedure. Uh, the other one is basically uh, to test the sides, how many sides there are, where these ones test the direction that have um, connected blocks to. So we'll be importing all those. So with that being said, um, if there was anything that I missed in this part, uh, there is a guidebook in this particular thing. I've made a PDF that explains you know, cross-mod compatibility for it and all the other settings that you'd probably end up needing to um, figure out normally. So we'll be covering basically most of the stuff today. Like we already covered the um, the letters, basically what the things mean clockwise, cl counterclockwise. Those are basically just the rotations. You might find them on certain ones. So those are all the different uh, models that we have to work with uh, for the thing. Uh, block tick updates. Everything is listed here. I, I spent about a couple hours writing all this. So... If there's something that I missed in the video, check this file. If not, uh, ask in the comments and I'll be able to answer you. So we'll be kind of using that as a guide. And uh, I already have a workspace set up, so we can just start creating the thing. So the first thing that we actually need to do is import the models and textures. So we'll be just using that workspace to kind of get started. Um, yeah, so let's get... Uh, the textures important stuff first. All right, so you want to go to the resource tab and then go import and then select block, which is this one right here. Uh, we're going to select our desktop because that's where the texture is located. And then we're just going to import this uh, texture here. Uh, after what we need to do is we need to go to our um, 3D models and mappings and then click the JSON 3D model, the little blue icon right there. And then what we want to do is we want to go to the same directory, go under models, JSON, and then we're going to start importing all these different shapes. So we're going to just go one folder at a time. We're going to select our texture. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of work until we get all these models set up. Um, I'll cover how to customize them in a little bit, uh, just because it's kind of a unique system the the rotations have to be set up in a certain way so I'm going to go through this quickly and then we'll take a look at block bench okay so there is a total of 17 textures so there's um, all the textures imported here or pardon me uh, models so we have all the models imported there's 17 of them uh, one texture so we've imported our assets now if you wanted to change a model or whatever you basically just have to hover over it, find the model that you want to basically change, and then you can basically set up the, or delete it. So you would click the delete button, and then you would re-import your new model for the uh, thing if you want a different model for it. So with that being said, let's hop into a Blockbench model that we have set up first, and we'll just take a quick look at... Um, something that we can basically edit so that we'll just look at the end piece which is for e so e is for end and this is basically just like the end uh, section for that so this is basically how it's set up for rotation as you can see the connection part is going to be at the edge of the block so basically what we want to do is make sure that if there's any changes to this particular thing 
that we want to make sure that it follows the same rotation point where it's connected and just a general shape and everything like that so you can change the size and all that for the blocks or you know the the detail and stuff like that if you want um, you can change the, how the texture reacts. We might be do that right now. So say if we wanted to change the um, texture for the, the end here to something with a wire, we can do that really easily by doing this. And then what we would do is we would just go ahead and um, go to file and then we would go export and then we would go to export block and then we can basically save this as the E version at the end, it should be the same name. We'll just be uh, exporting it here to my desktop so I can easily import it. So before, as you can see, the, the end part was a uh, texture that was kind of like an end part right here. That was the end part. Uh, we had it like this. Now it's like this, so we can use that later on. So basically, if you wanted to make any changes to the size and stuff like that, you'd probably have to update the texture as well. Um, as well as the model. Um, any of the names should be just uh, single lines like this. I've run into issues with it not being that way. Uh, the other thing that you might want to consider, uh, we're not going to save that actually, we're just going to close out of it, is uh, when you're creating your models not to make them too complicated because if you want one, you might have a lot of models uh, for or different blocks in your world for this and it could lag if there's a lot of shapes and stuff but it also will take a lot of time to actually set up the um, the shapes themselves so each model if you open up the JSON file with notepad plus uh, plus you will find these two lines right here under elements uh, this is the elements tab and then you'll have the name of it, the actual element and then you will have from and to so from is basically your minimum coordinates for the block uh, model for the block bounding uh, size shapes and stuff like that and then you two is your maximum version of those numbers so in order to basically set up the bounding box all you need to do is basically plug these numbers in in the order that they have it so this would be your x y and then z and then your X, Y, and Z for your maximum coordinates. And I've done this multiple times and it's been flawless for setting up. So it's a pretty efficient way of actually setting up the block models. All right, so with that being said, um, we will just go ahead and start working on setting up the blocks. So I'm gonna create a folder and then I'm gonna call it blocks uh, just because this is gonna make it a lot easier to actually work on. And then what I want to do is I want to basically create a block and then we're going to call this one um, cable. And then what we're going to do is create new block. And then what we want to do is select our cable block. So this is going to be the very beginning one that we're going to use for basically placement and all that other stuff. So we want to select the electric cable one, which is the one without the letter. And then we're going to set the rotation to Y rotation, or pardon me, not Y rotation, uh, D U N S W E rotation for player side. We need that particular setting set up in order to do that. Uh, some other things that you need to do is make sure it's on cutout and select your texture for the thing for the actual uh, cable itself. Now the bounding box, again, uh, if you want to set this up, um, this particular one is um, not the end one that we have. So you would have to go into models and then find the version that you would want. Ep open it with uh, Notepad++ and then the value should be listed right under the elements thing. So uh, for this one, it is 5551111. Five, 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 11, 11, 11. So pretty easy one to actually remember. And it's only one el mod element or mesh. So we would set this up like 555 five, five, and 1111. 11 and 11 so that would be our bounding box for the uh, system you'd have to go through uh, each model and make sure it's set up like that for depending on how many shapes and stuff you have for your model but outside of that that's the easiest way to do it so 
All right, so moving on, uh, you might want to set some different properties here. Uh, you might want it to be under wood so it can burn uh, or some other things. I'm just going to stick this actually under the um, transportation tab because it's easier to find there. And then you, you can basically set up any of these properties however you want. Um, you might want to make it a little bit harder to break. Um, just so it's a little bit easier to not damage the wires right away if you're mining something. And uh, a good sound for cables is actually cloth, so you can set it to cloth if you want to. And then set your other properties, whatever you want. This, this uh, page here is completely customizable to your liking. Uh, for other blocks though, you will want to make sure that the creative pick item targets this block that we're actually currently working on, the very um, base one for your placement. Uh, you will also want uh, the cables to drop this same uh, particular block that we're currently working on. So we'll set that up in, the, in a little second. Advanced tab, you will need this set to one tick. Uh, all the other properties can be configured though, however you like. For block entity, you will need to enable this. Um, we don't actually need an inventory, so I'm just going to set that to zero. Uh, if your block does have an inventory though, then you can have this to whatever you need. Uh, I'm disabling these two because I don't need them right now, but you can set them up however you like. Uh, with that being said, moving on to f energy and fluid storage, you will want to enable um, energy uh, storage for the block and then you want to set your values to something low now the standard that i'm basically setting for this particular uh, system is and that i've tested on is set up to basically transfer I th i'm pretty sure i put the power values in the document um yeah so the the power values the capacity I set to 150 and then basically I've taken that number and I've divided that by six so each side has a certain value that it can basically send that happens to be 25 um, power points each for each side so this basically just allows it to constantly fill up really quickly and because the higher the number the capacity the more time that it will actually take to fill up the block itself for energy because it still has to do that. Uh, it doesn't just go directly to the, the blocks that you want. So if you have a really long cable system, it's going to take a little bit longer to uh, fill up. And obviously you can change this value to whatever you want, uh, especially if you want to use different size of cables and stuff like that. You might want some heavy duty ones or whatever. Uh, I have a chart in the document that basically lists the values that are recommended for basically cross mod compatibility. Um, this is just to make sure that other mods and stuff have the same properties. So you can use that as a template. Uh, the receive power is the same as the receive and extract power where the capacity is the value that you need for those. So we're basically creating a small size cable um, it's also the default value for that and then we also have some other things that we have to set up but that let's not get ahead of ourselves so once you've done that all you need to do is go to triggers and set up a block for update tick we're just going to save this right now uh, we're not going to change it at the moment because there's nothing to actually change but uh, we need to make sure that this block is set up so it's um, already for the actual system. So generation, you don't need anything for generation, you can just save. So that's our first block. Uh, we want to put the procedure under another procedure folder. So we're just gonna call this one procedures, procedures. And then we're going to go ahead and just stick that in there. So once we've done that, uh, we can basically duplicate this block a few times. So we need a, a uh, few different um, model blocks to actually set them up. I have them again in that PDF file that we have here. So um, 
all these different ones that we have. Now, Annie is basically the one that we're working on. This is our no connection one. So we're going to just say um, cable E for the end piece. And then we're going to set this up a little bit differently. So again, you will have to select your model. This is E. And then again, you would set your block bounding parts. I'm just going to set this to uh, 0, 0, 0, and 16, 16, and 16, just so it's um, easy to break and stuff. So the only other properties that you need to do for these things is basically point to your main block uh, for the um, cable. So basically when it drops, when it's broken, it's going to basically drop the main cable block. And when the creative pick item is selected, it's going to be basically giving you the main port, main block. You also want to disable the inventory for creative tab as well because you don't want this cluttering up all the um, properties. But all the other properties should be the exact same, including the update tick. You want to use the same update tick procedure so it basically runs as um, the other ones. So we'll be covering that in just a little bit. So once you've done that, um, make sure to do that for all your blocks. Again, there is a list of them listed right here. So you'll need to set up them for those particular um, letters and stuff like that. But once you've done that, uh, we can carry on. So I'm going to pause, get this done, taken care of, and then we'll get into the procedure system. All right, so I've got all the blocks set up. So these are all the different rotations. Again, I've done it in the order of the table for the um, actual properties. So it's all set up for the order that this is in. I uh, can import them however you like, but I just did it so it's easier to kind of see in the workspace uh, due to how things basically are listed under the name properties. All right, so with that being said, uh, now we need to go into the procedure system. We're going to create a new folder for one called um, model updater and then what we're going to do is we're going to set up our first main procedure for the model updater uh, script so we're going to just basically import a procedure so we need to create a new procedure and then we're going to go ahead and set up uh, model updater again we probably want to point this to our cable so cable model updater um, main so we're going to call it main so it's easier to find and then we're going to basically go ahead and import our main procedure so we want to go to update tick model updater and then we want to import this one right here now you're going to see all these uh, different call procedures now these ones are basically not set up uh, automatically so we're going to have to relink all these and we're also going to have to select our blocks for basically selecting it. Now we don't actually have all these set up at the moment. Uh, we don't have the procedures yet implemented. So we're going to have to do it one at a time. Uh, we're going to need to make all those before we can actually get this procedure up and running. But uh, if you click on the little help icons, as you can see, there is basically says what shape it is and then it also says what kind of shape for the script as well so each one of these shapes have their own procedure uh, this one's for e etc so we would have to set up our blocks for these ones so this one is our e position or model and we're just going to go along the thing see what letter it is and then we're going to set up the model for that particular one so i'm going to get through this part first and then we'll carry on into the actual script all right so that part is completely done so i've linked up all the blocks on this side now we just need to basically get the procedure set up i am going to make sure that this isn't actually on the green block at the moment because as soon as we do that we're going to run into some errors with the uh, procedures blocks not being linked so we're just going to save this procedure as it as being detached so it doesn't mess up any of the um like the workspace for compatibility so once we get all the procedures sub procedures for this set up then what we can do is we can go back through this and set them up for all the different um, 
call procedures in here. So we're just going to save that for now. And then what we need to do is we need to create kind of like a subfolder uh, for this. So we're going to call it um, sub uh, just to make it easy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new f uh, procedure here. So we can basically go ahead and start making the um, procedures. So I'm going to call this uh, cable model uh, yeah, updater. And then if you want to basically see the procedures that you need to set up, just go back to that one original file and it lists all the different versions of the things. So it's again, just the letter for the uh, type that it is. So again, we're gonna use N for non-existent uh, connections. And then we're going to just copy this uh, up to this point right here. So we can basically set up other procedures like it. And then what we're going to do is just create procedure and then we're going to go ahead and find in for this procedure, import that. And then what you're going to want to do is set up the actual block for this particular version. Again, this is the one that doesn't have any letter. And this is basically the script that um, configures the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, rotations and stuff like that for the connections. There's going to be a lot of these particular blocks for each rotation. Uh, basically what it's doing in short is is basically testing for each uh, side of the block and testing for a couple different properties. Now uh, cables are listed under a forge namespace called cables. Now I'm going to be saying this pretty strict but the Forge namespace like Forge cables should be used for cross mod cross mod compatibility. So don't change that unless you really want to separate your mod from other mods. Um, again, same goes with the MBT uh, tags for the directions. Uh, these should be set up the way that they are uh, because if you have different uh, different versions, you might want you, like if you have different values, it's not going to be compatible with other mods. Uh, however, I understand that adding different size of cables will sometimes need different variables. Uh, in some cases, you might want to connect to a larger block or something like that. Uh, for that reason, in the document under certain pages, uh, if we scroll down to the forge cable one this is the forge tag or forge tag for cables uh, you will want to basically use something similar to this uh, probably these exact values for the cables again we're using small so we could use small for this particular value uh, we just basically add slash and then the s at the end for small uh, again that correlates to the um, size for the actual cables themselves so these would be the cable sizes that you basically set up so small would be that one um, you don't necessarily need to change it at the moment uh, we're just setting it up but uh, the other values uh, for the actual MBT tags you might want to do something like this instead so forge cable north small and then you just update the north part for the direction for the block. So again, these would be the directions. You'd basically just put an S on the end if you wanted it for a small cable. Uh, the reason for this is if all mods use the same values, then it will be cross compatibility for all of the mods. If you start mixing and matching different values, then cables aren't going to connect properly to other ones and you're just going to have a really bad time. So, um, try to keep all the properties the same or at least follow the the guide for the actual uh, file that I created so you can kind of keep it all along the same um, variables and stuff like that. So outside of that, the only thing that we really need to do for this is set up the block and everything else is basically taken care, care of unless you have different sizes of cables and then you'll have to kind of adjust those but um, you don't really need to do that right now. All right, so all you need to do is set that block, save it, and then we're going to create one for each one of these particular procedures. So this one will be for E and so on, and then we're just gonna import 
and update the same. So I'll do this one more time so you guys can kind of see the process. So we'll import it and then we need to select our E version. So this is our E block, it says cable E and then that one's all good to go. So as you can see, this one's got quite a few different rotations for it, uh, six in total. So usually they don't go over six, but sometimes there's four, sometimes there's two, but usually it doesn't go over six. So we'll save that and then we'll do that for all the different ones and I'll cut back in. All right, so now that we have all the different procedures, all we need to do is go back to our main procedure, open that up, and then we need to basically link up all those different procedures that we just created into these files. So again, we would search, and then we would set up the procedures below. So we would just basically do this for each one of them. So we can basically go ahead and link them up so they work properly. Now all these procedures are required to be imported like this, uh, reason being is each one has their own rotations, there is different script for all of them, so in order to make it work properly this part has to be uh, set up the way that we just did this particular process. If you miss a step or if you use the wrong procedure it's not going to work properly. So. Um, I actually ran into an issue recently uh, when I was adding support for the block rotation for the um, uh, MBT tags and the reason why it didn't work was because one of the uh, couple of the uh, actual procedure procedure things were not set up properly for the rotation and it was causing uh, so many issues with the actual system itself so it just shows how sensitive the system actually is for the script so again we're just going to be linking up all the um, systems so this is TX and TXC so this is why I basically named them the same thing so I can basically easily find them in the procedure list so TXC and this is X and then this is XC and then F and then finally S. So all that should be set up now. All we need to do is basically drop that on to here. So that one's all good to go. Uh, now we can move on to the uh, go back to the update tick procedure where this one is and before we edit that one what we need to do is set up the variable um, energy stuff so we're going to make sure that it's set up perfectly for everything that we need uh, so we're going to just call this um, fe for forge energy and then we're going to go ahead in here and then we're going to create um, uh, what did I call the other procedure I think it was something like um, cable, I'll just create one called cable, uh, forge energy, uh, main, and we're going to copy that up to this point right here. And then we're going to create that new procedure. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our update, per, uh, update tick procedure folder go into forge energy and then what we want to do is we want to import the main procedure here so once we've done that uh, we have all the different things that we need to set up now this part down here is all configured already you don't actually need to set any of that up uh, the only things that need to be configured are these particular things again anything with a help text to display what it's supposed to be is going to need to be updated so uh, all these different things point to different um, procedures. So before we link that onto it, uh, we're just going to leave it like it is. Uh, so it's detached from the green block and then we're going to go ahead and create those uh, procedures uh, right now. So again, we need to go and create another folder. We're just going to call this sub. So we can basically add all the procedures in here. So the first one that we want to add is sides. Uh, so what this one does is it basically counts the sides and we're going to basically import numbers and then select that one and there are a few things that we actually need to get in this particular uh, procedure itself so the first thing that we need to do 
is work on the actual direction. So before we do that, I'm just going to create a new procedure. And then we're going to call this one, uh, we'll call it north. And then we're going to basically import the north one. This is under logic. And then we're going to select north. And we're dropping that directly onto the green block and saving. So we need to do that for all of the procedures. So south and uh, all the directions as well. So again, south is that one. And we're gonna drop that down there, save. And then we'll go through all of the different blocks and set them up as needed. So again, do that for every direction. And then we can go back into this file and update, update them. All right, so now we're basically just, we have all the uh, particular procedures imported. So those ones are for all the different sides. Now we can finally work on the actual side procedures. So this one needs to be south. Uh, again, we're going to be updating it corresponding to the actual uh, variables here for the actual sides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go south for this one and then we want north. Whoop, that one should be north, not south north east so east uh west west is there and then we have up and down so once that's set up what you can do is you can just drag that right on to the main green block and save and then that one's set up so now we have all the blocks that we need for the main forge energy one so again we'll be setting up the uh procedure for the call procedure for this so we're going to set up the sides for that one and then we're going to do south north east and west and then finally up and down so this one and down here so once that one's all set up uh, basically what this does is it basically go ahead it goes and it tests the amount of sides that it needs to get and the reason why it's getting the sides is because we want to divide that by as much as um, we can and then what it's doing is it's testing for the sides of the uh, the block um, if there's a valid connection and stuff like that so if there's a valid connection what it's going to do is it's only going to basically test if these one the directions are true so again it's going to get the return value for these ones uh, for the amount that it returns so if it if there isn't a south side it's going to return false to the south and then obviously south will not run so basically that just basically sends and extracts the current power from the current block and sends the power to the other one. Now we don't actually need to, um, or we should, we need to actually extract it from the block itself because it doesn't actually send the power otherwise. Like it will add to another block, but it will not um, take in consideration if it sends something, it doesn't deduct it automatically. So that's where the extract for the same thing comes in and it does that for every side so it's all calculated based on the amount of uh, amount of energy the block has not how much it ha can basically hold so it's configurable for every size of cable and stuff like that you just need to basically drop that on here and then it's basically good to go uh, there is a couple different things that we need to set up though uh, there is the tag that we still need to set up and the actual update tick so once we go into the update tick we want to import and then go back to our update tick procedure select our update tick and then these two call blocks right here are going to be relevant to what procedure we need to run so we want to basically test for the model update updater main and then we want to get the main forge energy one so you'll have to kind of find that in the list uh, this is the Forge Energy one. So once these two are set up, uh, you can just click Save. And that's why we did it in that particular order. So everything's already created while we do that. Uh, in order for the cables to connect, though, we do need a uh, tag. Now, the tag should be the same as the tag right here. So what we can learn from this tag is 
it's under the forge directory or namespace and it's called cable so we're just going to copy cable and we're going to go ahead and create a tag so we go ahead and set up a tag right where is it tag and then we're going to go cable and then we want to basically just go tag uh, so it's not going to have any conflict with any or other elements and we're going to remove that last part the underscore and tag part it's under the forge namespace and then we want it a block tag so basically anything that blocks are and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, select the first one at the top here for a cable and then we're going to select all the way down here holding shift and then we can select every block in it for our cables and then what we're going to do is we're going to select item and it's going to add it all to that particular list so that's all you need to do uh, now let's go into the actual workspace or the test environment and we'll just see if everything is set up and I'll cut back in once that's done all right, so we're currently in the game and I'm just going to go under transportation and we should see our cable block right here. And then what we can do is we can basically just place it. Now, you might have noticed that this is set up like that. That's probably because the cable is not set to cut out. Uh, we might have forgotten to do that on some of the cables. So um, yeah, as you can see, those ones are fine, but the other one with the uh, and is set up so most likely that has to do with the transparency we can quickly take a look at that uh, we'll go into M crater and then blocks and then it's our end cable so this actually does look like it's set up properly um, bounding box might just be that I'm not sure actually why this one isn't working like it should. That should be E. And then you would want to make sure that it's on transparency. So I'm not sure actually why. It might just be um, something that we missed in that particular step, but probably just a visual bug more or less. You can try regenerating the code. Um, again, all this is the other, use the same settings, so it's probably just a visual glitch, most likely. But, um, yeah, so we just want to make sure that everything's set up. So we'll go ahead and create a kind of like a cube, a 3x3 cube. Now, this is where some of the issues come in. Uh, you might have noticed that that rotation is like that so most likely there is a procedure or something messed up uh, we can test to see if the tags are properly set up if not then most likely it has to do with the rotation of the block uh, I did run into a couple issues um, with the actual cable before I'll probably double check to see if the cable is set up properly uh, we'll go ahead and just kinda build it up see if there's any other issues with certain parts so it looks like the corner piece might be not set up properly and we got the five junction so we'll probably have to test some of those uh, particular things so again if you want to test the model rotation uh, it's pretty straightforward to do that uh, we'll I'll cover that just quickly I'll, because I'll most likely be trying to fix this in a couple minutes uh, before I publish the video but um, so if you go under procedures and then model updater and then you want to go here um, one of the ones that were an issue was the five corner or five point so most likely it has something to do with one of these particular things uh, you can test the uh, what one it's having issues with but most likely it's having just a general issue in general so um, for these sides if we go into the forge cable part models and then block bench and then we want the F version 
and we're going to open that particular one up with the actual rotation like set up like this so basically we need to know what directions this is the default state for the block so we need to know how it's basically working uh, there might be an issue with the actual system so I'm going to move that onto a other screen so I can kind of see where the rotations are and uh, of course M creator is going to be a little bit buggy so I'm going to just close out of that because I minimized it not sure why it's doing that it just seems to be an ongoing bug that the developers can't figure out what's causing it um, it's multi screen setup though so all right, so back to procedures, model updater, sub, and then the F version. All right, so this is where the default state should always be facing north. So if we scroll down, we'll have north. And then basically what I want to do here is confirm that the block model is set up the exact same way. So we have a up version down version left or wet this is east and then we have our right as well as our north so it sh for north it should be uh, east west up down and north uh, from that we can basically just kind of figure out where the rotation needs to go so uh, we have up down um, north so this is north and then we have our east and west so those ones should be set up properly uh, we can check double check them make sure the coordinates are set up so these ones are positive these ones are negative uh, these ones are negative so that's all good and then we have the uh, negative y ones so this is the north direction so that should be set up the way it should be uh, for that and then we want to make sure that when we rotate it a certain direction so east uh, the values update so again up and down are set up and then we should have east and west so these ones are set up already and then we have our um, direction for east so this is our east one so that one looks fine as well uh, most likely it has to do just with a single block most likely so those ones are fine. Uh, if we rotate it uh, again south, then what we have is the up and down. And then this is, this should be facing south. That's facing south, that's good. And then our east and west. So, so far I'm not seeing any issues with the, the blocks itself. And then we have west, which is up and down. And then we have north and west, and then west direction. So all those seem to be properly set up. Up and down. Uh, so again, if you want to kind of visualize how it's set up, uh, you can select all the, the mesh meshes, and then you can basically rotate it up and down. So with this one, if we're going clockwise, it's going to be facing like this. So this will basically be the model for the um, what do you call it the up version so it should be all the different sides so again all these are the different sides those are all properly set up and then it should be on the up version so again I'm not seeing any issues with that particular system it might just be a glitch from one of the particular blocks that have an issue so we'd have to kind of check each one of them as we progress I'm going to do that before I publish the script and everything like that just make sure all the files are properly set up um, so um, if there's any issues uh, most likely this happened when I was importing or setting up the um, MBT tags so added support for that again I'm going to be doing a future tutorial on how to make different machines and stuff and uh, liquid pipes as well but uh, for now, that's all the time that I have for today. I've already taken up a lot of time for that. Uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.